Hello, my name is Haroon Hashmi. I'm an attorney at Clark Hill and part of the firm's healthcare business unit. I'm thrilled to kick off our healthcare law video series by offering a unique perspective on the healthcare fraud and abuse laws and how you, the healthcare entrepreneurs and practitioners, can use them to your advantage. First, what are the healthcare fraud and abuse laws? While there are many local, state, and federal laws and regulations that affect healthcare providers, the two that most frequently come up when structuring a healthcare business or operating a healthcare business are the anti kickback statute and the Stark Law. The anti kickback statute is a federal law that prohibits the exchange or offer to exchange anything of value in order to induce or reward referrals of healthcare business reimbursable by the federal health care programs such as Medicare or Medicaid. The anti-kickback statute is broad in scope and that it applies to all individuals and entities and imposes both criminal and civil penalties. The Stark Law prohibits physicians from referring healthcare business that's reimbursable by the federal health care programs to any entity with which the physician or an immediate family member has a financial relationship. Under the Stark Law, financial relationships can either be ownership interests or compensation arrangements. And the Stark Law is narrower in scope in that it only applies to physicians and physician relationships and only imposes civil penalties. And for that reason, in order to overcome a violation of the Stark Law, a healthcare business or provider must fall squarely within one of the exceptions provided for in the statute. First and foremost, it's important to understand the core purpose of the healthcare fraud and abuse laws, which is to protect patients. So off the bat, complying with these laws gives you two general advantages. Number one, trustworthiness with your patients, and number two, marketability. In addition to these general advantages, both the anti-kickback statute and the Stark Law provide certain exceptions, which can be used as roadmaps for development and innovation. Each of these exceptions is, are suitable for different kinds of investors and operators within the healthcare industry. For example, the anti-kickback statute protects a certain investment interests. Under the anti-kickback statute investment interest safe harbor, providers can foster collaborations that can improve patient care and the delivery of healthcare services. This safe harbor is ideal for investors, particularly physicians, who are looking to invest disposable time, income, or savings in a healthcare business that can benefit a portion of their patients without taking on the risk and responsibility of starting independently from scratch. The anti-kickback statute also creates a safe harbor for group purchasing organizations. The group purchasing organization safe harbor under the anti-kickback statute allows collective groups of providers come together and benefit from economies of scale, potentially reduce the costs of services that are offered to their patients. With diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives or DEI initiatives more important now than ever, this safe harbor offers a unique opportunity for cultural or social affinity groups to come together for a common benefit. Like the anti-kickback statute, the Stark Law also offers certain exceptions. One commonly used Stark exception is for in-office ancillary services. The in-office ancillary services exception to the Stark Law is ideal for physicians looking to add a service line to their practice for the benefit of patients who visit their office. Importantly, the in-office ancillary services exception only applies to physician ownership arrangements, not simply to compensation rates. The ancillary service offered under this exception may be independently owned by the physician practice or jointly owned with another partner or manager who may assist in the financing, management, or operations of the new service line. This exception is commonly used in the development of in-office physician-owned laboratories. The Stark Law also provides an exception for fair market value compensation of legitimate clinical and or non-clinical services offered by physicians. Unlike the in-office ancillary services exception, which only applies to physician ownership arrangements, the fair market value compensation exception only applies to physician compensation arrangements. 
This exception is particularly useful for physicians looking to increase their personal revenues by using their skills, education, and training for the benefit of other healthcare entities and their patients without taking on the liability and responsibility of ownership. Finally, certain arrangements are permitted both by the anti-kickback statute and the Stark Law. Both the anti-kickback statute and Stark Law provide exceptions for certain personal services, management contracts, and outcomes-based payment arrangements. These exceptions are often used in the establishment of management services organizations, or MSOs, that are looking to develop a local, regional, or national brand that allows other practitioners to benefit from their knowledge and experience. Structuring a healthcare business using these exceptions is ideal for anyone who's ultimately looking to exit or partner with investment groups such as private equity, venture capital, or hedge funds. With that, to conclude today's video, I remind you that leveraging the healthcare fraud and abuse laws to your advantage is not about skirting the regulations, but about using them as a guiding force for success. Thank you for joining me today. If you're looking for a provider-centric healthcare attorney that understands your unique needs and is passionate about your success, don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time, take care, and let's build a brighter future for healthcare providers all across the country.